we'll start with Everton, as we always do. Now, the appeal board paperwork says any future breaches will be punished with a points deduction. Not good news, really, for a second charge, potentially. Yes, it's uh, an interesting situation. However, it will be a completely new panel. And that's the interesting thing, is that they may take into account things like double jeopardy, uh, things like the mitigating circumstances, and come to a different con different conclusion than the uh, the first panel. So that's one ray of hope for Everton. And uh, I think that's where I believe it may end up. And I think I'm expecting, and I, I thought I could be wrong, I'm expecting a, a points deduction again, but suspended. And Everton could potentially argue, of course, that double jeopardy punished them twice. Is that now a fair argument, do you think? Without doubt. I mean, if two of the years that they're going to be looking at, two of the three years that this particular panel is looking at, have already been sanctioned, uh, then I think it's a very fair uh, legal precedent on double jeopardy is well established. And so I think you'd be looking again at maybe a third of any particular penalty. Uh, so if it was going to be six points again, it may only be two. And I think that, again, if they look at the mitigating circumstances uh, in a more favourable light, which I think is very, very, uh, very, very clear, I think it should be looked at again, then I think we, you know, we may see a suspended uh, uh, sentence. And that's what I'm hoping for anyway. And are most Evertonians feeling confident that a suspended sentence could actually happen or is it unlikely? No, I think the uh, the mood is at the moment that a lot of people are expecting another points deduction. And uh, that seems to be what the general consensus because of what you said earlier, that it's now established that any breach will be a points deduction. Uh, but I think I can see a different route to a decision. And if we move over to 777 Partners, now they're set for a crunch meeting to discuss the takeover. Jing, it really is a now or never scenario, Keith. It has to be. It's, it's just dragged on again. And it's just been hanging around there for, I think we're up to about over 180 days, nearly 190 days. So they're going to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the Premier League. There's got to be, uh, although maybe not a decision at that meeting, there's got to be a clear timeline uh, to establish this because it, it just can't go on. Uh, as I understand it, the club cannot engage with any other potential buyers until the Premier League have made a decision. And uh, I suppose 777 obviously deserve that right because they've been funding Everton to uh, to quite an extent. So it's it's fair that they get their decision, but the, again, the, the timing and the, the whole length of this process is ridiculous. And even if they pass the owners and directors test, Keith, do you actually think, it will, obviously it will need to be ratified by the independent oversight panel, similar to really Sir Jim Ratcliffe and that whole scenario. How long do you imagine that's going to take? Well, again, I mean, there's been stories coming out again about 777 in the last few days about problems with their uh, reinsurance business. Uh, there was a uh, shareholders call with the uh, the guy who runs, a Kenneth King is, is his name, I believe. He runs a company called ACAP, which has been providing a lot of the business for 777. And uh, he's already said publicly that uh, he's going to be withdrawing a lot of his business from the 777 reinsurance company in Bermuda, which is where the majority of the cash was coming from uh, for their football adventures. So if news keeps coming, uh, you know, then I think things are going to change. And so it's going to be hard to say how long that's going to take. Uh, but it's got to come to a point when the Premier League say, Look, no, we, we don't believe that you have the necessary resources or the security of the necessary resources for the next period of time, say two years, uh, that we believe is required and we're going to reject your, uh, your bid. Um, but obviously we know it's a legal minefield because 777 can then sue the Premier League if they decide it's, it's a wrong judgment. But I believe there's enough there now to say that uh, it would be difficult for the Premier League to approve it. And we know that 777 partners, are, of course, are involved with Sevilla, Genoa uh, and Standard Liège. Now, actually, Liège fans protested against their ownership last month. And I'm, I'm sure that doesn't bode well, really, with fans either. No, there's a lot of fan connection. And in fact, I was speaking to some German contacts uh, the other day, Hertha Berlin. Uh, also, the fan base there are very unhappy with uh, what they're seeing with 777. And of course, fan networks talk, uh, which is quite right. And uh, I know there was real problems in the South American club they had as well. So it's it's not a great picture. Uh, they seem to have you know statements saying that these things are all just uh, wrongfully received, you know, conceived in the media. But I think there's just a lot of smoke there, and I think there must be some fire. Do you anticipate potentially then that someone else will try and step in and sort of hijack the move? Do you do you reckon that could happen? 
Yes, I do believe that's going to happen. It's been uh, two major American sporting groups have been linked so far. Um, but again, I think it would be difficult to see how they can really engage with Everton uh, at the moment while 777 still have this exclusive agreement in place. And that's the problem any other potential buyer is going to have. They'll be working off probably old numbers or things they can put together in the media and maybe, maybe just sort of declare an interest at some stage. Uh, but uh, I would imagine it's difficult for Everton and Mashiri's uh, people and advisors to be able to, to you know, actually interact with potential buyers just yet. And what do you think the whole scenario of this or the, the outcome of this is going to be? Do you think that 777 will get over the line? Will it be somebody else that comes in and, and, and takes over? I really believe it'll be another group that will come in from uh, from the outside. I think there's ways that they there is still a window where they can come in. They could repay 777's uh, debt that they've already established with Everton. They could work with the existing debt holders. And I think there is still a window uh, to work that through and relieve Mashiri of the, uh, the ownership of the club. And what sort of a time frame are we talking, do you imagine? Well, it would have to be done pretty quickly. And uh, I would think if 777, say, is rejected uh, by mid-March or the at the very latest at the end of March, then I think a new owner would want to be in place before the end of the season. Now, that's going to be pretty hard with due diligence to be done, but it can be done. Uh, I remember that uh, when I was at Villa, the due diligence there only took a week, uh, which is but that was unusual. Uh, but it can be done quickly. And I think, you know, the new stadium uh, is obviously the shining asset that people would want to get uh, involved with the club for and the future forecasts of, of the revenue streams going forward. So, yes, I think it, it could be done and we'd hope to have before the next transfer window opens up a new owner.